Hi, boys and girls. How are you? This is your coach, Noel, and I'm so excited to be working with you today on this math lesson. Parents, I want to welcome you. Boys and girls, let's go ahead and get started, okay? So what we're doing today is we're adding fractions with different denominators. And let me just tell you something from the get-go. When we're adding fractions, when we're subtracting fractions, we absolutely positively must have the same denominator. There's no other way around it. We have to have the same denominator, okay? Whenever we're adding and subtracting fractions. Now, if we're multiplying or dividing fractions, it doesn't matter. But if we're adding fractions and subtracting fractions, that is a must. We have to have the same denominator, okay? So, here we have one-fourth. Here we have five-eighths. Look, we've got different denominators. We have a problem, boys and girls. We have to make the denominators the same. How do I do that? This is what I typically do. I look at the 8, which is the larger number, and then I ask myself, can 4 go into 8? Ah, it can. How many times? Two times. 4 times 2 is 8. So I'm going to multiply this 4 here by 2. If I multiply the bottom by 2, I have to multiply the top by 2. Okay, let's take a look and see what that's going to look like. Over here we have 2 eighths because 1 times 2 is 2 and 4 times 2 is 8. So now I have 2 eighths. And I just bring down the 5 eighths. Now I'm a happy camper. I feel great because I've got the same denominator. Now I can just add straight across. 2 plus 5 is 7. And then we have our denominator of 8. We put our 8 there. And the reason I have this circled is because we always have to see, is there a way that we can reduce this number? And there isn't. So the answer is going to be 7 eighths, and that's it. Okay? Now let's take a look at the next example. The next example I have 1 half plus 16. And I'm going to take you through this exercise, okay? So. Here I have 1 half. We know that any whole number is over 1. So this is going to be 16 over 1. If the number was 5, it would be 5 over 1. If the number was 10, what fraction would that look like? How would that fraction look like, boys and girls? That's right. It would be 10 over 1. Okay? Whenever we have a whole number, it's always going to be over 1. Okay? So now I have a 2 here. I've got a 1 here. We have a problem, boys and girls. We need to have the same denominator. So how many times can 1 go into 2? Can it? Yes, it can. 2 times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the bottom by 2, the denominator by 2, and I'm going to multiply the numerator by 2. I'm going to bring down the 1 half here. 16 times 2 is 32. 1 times 2 is 2. Look. I've got the same denominator now. Now I'm happy. So now I just add straight across. 1 plus 32 equals 33 over 2. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if I can reduce it. But wait, uh-oh. The numerator is larger than the denominator. Hmm. I could leave it like that, but that doesn't look too clean. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a mixed number out of this 33 over 2. How do I do that? Well, I divide 33 by 2, and I've shown you this before. This is how I do my division. I put my pretend multiplication sign right here, and then I just divide. Can 2 go into 3? Yes, it can. One time. 2 times 1 is 2. I put my 2 there. I put my subtraction sign, my line, and then I subtract. 3 minus 2 is 1. This 3 here, I'm going to bring it down. So now I have 13. How many times can 2 go into 13? Well, I know that 2 can go into 13 6 times. 2 times 6 is 12. The 12 will go there. I subtract, put my line there. 13 minus 12 is 1. So take a look, boys and girls. That's 16 right there. That's going to be your whole number. 
the remainder is going to be your numerator and the divisor is going to be your denominator. So we have 16 and a half. And guess what, boys and girls? And I know that you know some of you already knew this, but you were looking at it at this problem and you said, one half plus 16, well, that's 16 and a half. And you would have been absolutely correct. Take a look. The answer is 16 and a half. But the reason we're doing this is because I want to take you through all the steps and I want you to see that whenever we have different denominators, we have to do a, a particular process. We have to use a strategy. We have to use a recipe to be able to solve these problems, okay? And that's why we went over it like this. Now, let me remind you, boys and girls, that your parents have a PDF file of 20 pages worth of practice problems for you to do. And I guarantee you that you're going to be able to do this just fine. Anytime you need to look at this lesson again, just go back, take a look at it, take your time, and do the steps step by step. Let's follow the recipe. Let's follow the strategy. It's not that difficult, boys and girls. You're outstanding in math, and outstanding students put forth an outstanding effort, and I have no doubt in my mind that you are going to do that. I'm very, very proud of you. Parents, I want to thank you, and boys and girls, remember, keep up the outstanding work. Let's do one or two pages a week of the practice problems, and that's it, okay? In the meantime, everyone, please take care of yourselves, and bye-bye.